Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of Rivals on Gran Turismo 6 and in this particular matchup we are returning to the world of Lamar prototypes and these vehicles are extremely rapid as far as pure all-round ability coupled with performance for the price they're pretty much the best cars in the game because they may not be quite as quick as formula cars under some conditions but they're generally a lot cheaper than those vehicles and although they may not be as quick as some supercars in a straight line they're far faster around the track so they give you an excellent mix of everything they're incredibly quick in a straight line fantastic around corners now this particular matchup is slightly different to some of the others that we've done We've seen the 787B versus the Peugeot 905, we've discussed the two diesels going head to head, and various others. And we're gradually working our way through all of the different categories of prototype. And in case you were wondering, yes, we're working towards something very big. Now if you'd like tuned setups for these cars, you can find those in the description and more in-depth reviews at the end of the video. But for now, let's get into it. First up we have the Bentley Speed 8, and interestingly this is the only one of these six early 2000 shape prototypes which is actually a premium. And technically this rivals matchup is kind of Audi versus Pascalo, because we've got three Pascalos going up against two Audi R8s and the Bentley Speed 8. And for those who are unfamiliar, the Bentley Speed 8 is actually based on the Audi R8 prototype platform. So technically, it's Pascalo versus Audi if you're talking pure mechanicals. So how does the Bentley fare? Well, it's very popular. The fact that it is a premium helps a lot with the desirability and it's a good all-rounder. It does have a little bit of a slippery nature and the fact that it has a larger engine, which isn't too surprising for a Bentley, means that it does have a huge amount of torque over a thousand foot-pounds in fact. Overall the performance in a straight line for top-end performance in particular isn't quite as quick as you might expect but it isn't exactly slow and around corners although as I said it is a little bit slipperier than perhaps some other prototypes it certainly has the potential to win plenty of races. Next up we have a prototype which is very easy to underestimate on Gran Turismo 6 due to its more powerful sibling, the C60 Hybrid. This car is the Pascalo GV5 and this is actually a V10 engine version, a 5 litre, which is pretty big for a prototype, especially a modern one. And although it's not quite as powerful as the C60 Hybrid, it's not far off at all. In fact, this still has over 1,100 horsepower, and the top speed is only around 3 or 4 miles per hour off the pace of the hybrid. This is literally over a 290 mile per hour car. As far as handling goes, I personally prefer this to the hybrid version. It's smoother, less twitchy, and certainly more beginner friendly. And although it is underappreciated by many players, it is most definitely a vehicle that's worth checking out. Back on Gran Turismo 4 when this car debuted, it was by far my favourite prototype in the game, and it's one of the relatively few prototypes which hasn't really diminished over the years. It's still as good now as it was back then. Next up we continue the Pascalo lineup, this time with probably the most overlooked model of the range, and not surprisingly. I would say this is, in my opinion at least, the best looking Pascalo, purely for its livery. I love the colour choice. And this is the C60 Courage model. It's a 3.2 litre V6 engine, so significantly smaller than the other two, and it is the least powerful car of this rival's match, with well under a thousand horsepower. It still only weighs 900 kilos though, and by far the best attribute about the Courage model is the drivability. Not just the handling, because even the GV5 and the Hybrid have very effective handling, but with this car it's much more beginner friendly. Now that is due to, in part, having less power to deal with, but even with less power, this is a remarkably quick vehicle. Around the track, as you can see from the lap time, it's certainly not that far off the pace of far more powerful machines. Considering it has around 200 horsepower less than the other Pascalos, it can still keep up a remarkably good pace. Next up we move over to the Audi camp again with the 2001 spec 
R8. This was the first Audi R8 to be featured on Gran Turismo, with the Team Orica being featured later. This car is available in two different primary liveries, one which has red detailing and the other with yellow, and it's a pretty popular model that I've personally never been a big fan of. I don't really like the look of the car, and I found it to be a little bit soft, to be honest. It doesn't really feel focused and angry enough, but for an endurance prototype, that actually helps because it's less stressful on the driver. As far as the Audi R8s go specifically, this is the lighter of the two, but also less powerful. And in an interesting twist, this is actually the most expensive car of the group, really for no apparent reason with a price tag of 25 grand. But the Audi R8 does of course have huge historical significance for being such a dominating force at the Le Mans, and in fact around the track. This car was, with me driving at least, on this particular track, second only in terms of lap time to the Pascalo Hybrid itself. Next up we return once again to the Pascalo dealership for one last time with by far their most popular model in the game, the C60 Hybrid. This is slightly newer than the other two, it has the largest engine of the group at 5 litres, only a little bit larger than the GV5 V10 version though. It is the most powerful of the group as well, and some people do believe, very strongly so in some cases, that this is the fastest prototype in the game. And I can understand why they'd think that, and around most tracks which allow it to use its power, it will give you often the best lap time. However, in a straight line, it's quite simply not the fastest prototype in the game. The Audi R10 can quite easily destroy this car in a straight line, and the Peugeot 908 can equal it. Around the track, though, it does have a pretty perfect blend of insane straight-line performance and, although twitchy, admittedly very effective and highly competitive handling. And finally, we revisit the Audi dealership again for the 2005 Team Orica version of the R8. This is one of the less popular prototypes in the game and for some strange reason it is heavier than all of the other cars here. In fact this model is 50 kilos heavier than any of the other cars here, all of which sit at 900 kilos. Now you may not think that 50 kilos of excess weight is going to make that much of a difference, but it was the slowest car here despite being the fourth most powerful, so that weight really does make a difference. The car is not without its advantages though, it has slightly updated visuals which some people may like over the other R8, it is of course 25 grand cheaper and it is more powerful, though there's not much use in that when it's slower anyway. So that's it overall for the breakdowns of each model. How though do they compare in our top trump style matchup? And which one will win? Well, it may seem obvious, but let's find out. Now, as we lay out all six vehicles and their respective specs, you start to see some really, really big numbers across the board. Another reason why prototypes are so good, they are such strong all-round racing machines. They have insane power, low weight, and great prices if you think about how good they actually are. So first of all, consider the price. As we said, the Audi R8 2001 model in particular is more expensive than all of the other cars here. All of the other cars, interestingly, cost 1.9 million credits each, and as such, all of the cars that have that price will get a point. So, everything but the Audi R8 from 2001 gets a point there. As far as engine capacity, well that point goes to the Pascalo Hybrid at a fraction under 5 litres, which, as I mentioned earlier, is not that much bigger than the GV5 version, but still is bigger and is enough to get it the point. Next up, as far as PP as well, well, it's not going to surprise anyone, of course. The Pascalo Hybrid again has the highest, but not by a big margin. In fact, not by a big margin at all. The Bentley is very close behind, only one PP lower, which is very interesting considering how much less power. The Bentley has almost 100 horsepower less, and yet the PP is still so close. Very interesting to note that. As far as power, well again, of course it goes to the Pascalo, it's one of the most powerful prototypes in the game, at 1169 horsepower. Interestingly for torque though, it doesn't get the point. The Bentley does in fact, with over a thousand 
foot-pounds of torque. And in fact, the Bentley wins by a much bigger margin than you probably think. None of the other cars here even come close to that kind of torque. The next closest thing, in fact, is the V10 Pascalo GV5, which incidentally has more torque than the hybrid. What about weight? Well, in a very similar way to price, we're doling out a lot of points here because they all, apart from one, sit at 900 kilos, with the only exception, as we said, being the strange 2005 Orica version with, for no apparent reason, an extra 50 kilos of weight. I'm sure there's a reason for that, I just haven't looked into what it is. So everything but that is getting a point there. And finally, of course, for the horsepower per tonne, well, it's fairly obvious. They all but one weigh the same, and one has far more power. Of course, the Pascalo Hybrid runs away easily with the most horsepower per tonne at 1.3 horsepower per kilo, or a fraction under 1,300 horsepower per tonne. Interestingly, though, even the worst of these cars, using the term worst in a very loose way, of course, still has over a thousand horsepower per tonne, and that's the Pascalo C60 Courage. So it really goes to show just how impressive these cars are, again, with huge horsepower per tonne ratios. And although, as always, the lap times are not awarded a point, because there are quite simply too many variables involved, driver, tune, track, etc. It is interesting to note, for those who perhaps didn't note down the lap times, that coming in in first place, with the biggest margin of all, is of course the Pascalo Hybrid, no surprises there. Interestingly though, coming in second, as I mentioned, is the 2001 version, Audi R8, the predominantly silver one. Then coming in third is the Pascalo GV5, the V10 model. Then in fourth is the C60 Courage, very interestingly, the least powerful car here, but still plays pretty well. Then coming in fifth is the Bentley Speed 8. Perhaps not as good a time as you might hope, but still, that's how it turned out for me at least. And lastly in sixth, due to predominantly that extra 50 kilos of weight, with just under a 110 lap, is the Team Orica Audi R8. So, how do the points tally up? Well, coming in first, and probably no surprise to anyone, and interestingly, one of the few times that the car with the most points actually gets the best lap time as well, it is, of course, the C60 Hybrid that wins with six points. Interestingly, coming in second with three points is the Bentley, which is interesting given that its lap time didn't really mirror the fact that it comes in second, at least on paper. Then, coming in in a joint third, are both of the other Pascalos with two points apiece, the C60 Courage and the GV5, and then, interestingly enough, coming in joint fourth with one point apiece are both of the Audis. Overall, though, as we said, one of the Audis was the second quickest of the group, so you can't always go by on-paper specs, as this entire series just goes to show. Overall, if you're looking for pure all-round ability, of course the hybrid is the obvious answer. But if you haven't got these cars, or maybe you only own the hybrid, I would implore you to try some of the other ones. Because although they are similar in terms of lap time, the way that they perform, the personalities that each of the cars have, and the way that they deliver their performance on different tracks, and different scenarios, and different situation types, makes them all valuable. Some more than others, but all valuable nonetheless. So, that's it overall for this particular pick, and we are, as you can ascertain, moving through all of the different types of prototype, and moving towards something very big, and you can probably guess what that will be. But, for now, that's it for this Rivals matchup, and as always, if there are rivalries that you would like to see, feel free to comment those down below, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.